Well, a whole lot of it here. We went from about 7 to 34 in a span of 10 minutes, and I expect it to, to jump significantly um, very shortly. So a couple places now where we've got, we've gone from a scattering to the majority and nearly all of the voting in some places. I think the most notable return we just got is from the suburbs just west of Des Moines. This is Dallas County. Again, this we have a broken record with this, but this is one of those high income, high college degree. This was a Marco Rubio County in 2016. You can see this. Look at Rubio got 34 percent of the vote. This was a double digit win. This is the classic Republican bedroom suburban community right outside the state's biggest city of Des Moines. And you can see now uh, how much of the vote we do have in here. Three quarters about Donald Trump, who finished third here uh, in 2016, comfortably ahead. Now, Nikki Haley is in second place. But look at that. It's Haley 25.8. It's DeSantis 25.8. That's a difference of two votes at this point between Haley and DeSantis. It seems clear Trump's going to get the win in Dallas County. And I think that's significant just given, again, yep. there's that college, non-college divide we've been talking about. For Trump, if he gets a win in a county like this, you know, this is sort of, this is hostile territory for him, relatively speaking. But Haley coming in second here, that's got to be her goal. But it's got to be second with some space. If she wants second place statewide, it's got to be a second it's not two votes ahead of Ron DeSantis. Because for, for her right now, I think the story is forget about the Trump number. In a county like this, it's Haley versus DeSantis. She's got to beat him. And the margin between Haley and DeSantis, she's got to get pad some vote here. Because the other places where we're starting to get a lot of the vote in, you know, take this is a very small rural county. But again, you know, look at the result here. Donald Trump, look, how, look at the improvement for Trump, by the way. He's up 40 points almost from where he ran in 2016. This is, this is the kind of uh, uh, political um, bridges he's built in the last eight years in these kinds of counties. These are rural, small population, uh, low college degree attainment. And, and look where Trump is performing here right now. You know, and again, Haley, it's second place here. It's just a question of a few votes. This is actually better than Rubio did in 2016. But again, she's only seven, point, uh, seven votes there ahead of, of DeSantis with, with what what you've got so and also Haley got caught we were tracking Johnson County earlier this is in general elections the most Democratic County in Iowa this is where Iowa City is here Haley was leading in the early count here she's now been passed by Donald Trump again that would be somewhat significant if Trump were able to win a county like this demographically this is one of the most ill suited to him in Iowa in a Republican caucus certainly in a general election uh, but Trump now is ahead a little bit Haley does have a bit of a pad here over DeSantis you can see it's about 400 votes but take a look in 2016, Rubio was able to get 800 more than the statewide winner, Ted Cruz, who, we, who he was chasing, and about 900 more uh, than, uh, than Donald Trump. So again, Haley wants to have as big a pad as she can in a county like this. Forget Trump at this point for her. Almost, she'd love, to see, she'd love to see it colored in her color here, her shade of red, but she wants to get a pad here over DeSantis. Still remaining to be seen. You know, Again, we're sitting at 29% in Sioux County. I think this is a little bit more, just a sliver more than the last time we checked in here. But again, this is the kind of county that DeSantis wants to be getting a pad over Nikki Haley. Uh, again, this is a, a this is a good number out of Sioux for Ron DeSantis. We're waiting. We only got a sliver more out of Lyon County. As we say, this is the kind of county um, it, it, for him only. He's coming in second. If, if the margin stays like this, 12 to 9 for second place, that's that, that's not what DeSantis needs at all. Again, we'll wait for more vote to come in right there. But again, as we check in overall, 37 percent statewide right now. There's a difference there of 600 uh, and 29 votes between Haley Haley and DeSantis that equate to 1.3 percent. Um, and, and so again, population centers. Haley wants to, to build up um, a gap between herself and, uh, and DeSantis and DeSantis, especially in the northwestern part of the state, but really throughout the state, all of these counties that went Huckabee, all these counties that went Santorum, all these counties that went Cruz. See, he, he'll take any wins he can get, but he needs a pad in all those counties over Haley. This is a very close race for second place. But again, I think you've been talking a little bit about this. It, we're also settling into a pattern here maybe where if this is just the difference ultimately between Haley getting 20 and DeSantis getting 19, DeSantis getting 20, Haley getting 19, and meanwhile Donald Trump sitting there 32 points ahead of them, it does, what does that second place do? I mean, you're talking about it. Haley is set up in New Hampshire almost regardless of what happens here tonight to take her shot at Donald Trump there. That's the state where he's always looked the most vulnerable. But if DeSantis gets second place here and it's a couple points ahead of Haley and it's, you know, there, there you go. He's got a little more of an update here and it's 32 points behind Donald Trump. Um, 
What does that position him for? Uh, Steve, can I ask you, while we're still looking at those Iowa statewide numbers, uh, on lower left-hand side there, there's a tiny little down arrow with a yellow shade. Oh, can yeah. you hit that? We can. I, I, I've yeah. been neglecting to show you the I'm rest of the field. What, what's happening with... Um, yeah, the Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah, and again, this is we saw him, I believe, at uh, at seven percent in our final poll. He's at seven point seven. Asa Hutchinson, right now, the former governor of Arkansas, didn't really. Uh, I think he made one debate stage um, way back, two tenths of a percent for him. Chris Christie, name still on this ballot, sitting there with twenty votes, but there are some other candidates down there. But Mr. Ramaswamy, below eight percent, that puts him essentially on track with his with the latest polls. Yeah, I mean this yeah. is. I mean this is very uh, similar. Now again, our final poll at Haley at 20, DeSantis at 16. The question to mark about turnout, you know, we had Trump at 48 in that final poll. So again, that final poll, the exit poll, and the results so far all pretty much in line. And it really does look like it's going to be a close fight here for second place. We need to see more vote, obviously. I told you the basic dynamics that we're following, but a very tight race for second. But Trump just showing you those the improvements he's had, whether it's in these rural counties where he's running 40 points better, whether it's in Johnson County where for the moment he's taken the lead Lead over Nikki Haley. Johnson County, again, probably should be the worst on the map, one of the worst on the map for Donald Trump um, outside of a Sioux in northwest Iowa. So, you know, he's the inroads he's made here relative to 2016 and, and frankly, relative to the start of this campaign. I mean, it's hard to remember, but this time last year in 2023, the whole reason DeSantis got in, the whole reason Haley got in, and for a time, a whole bunch of other candidates got in is there was polling at the start of 2023 that had Donald Trump nationally losing to DeSantis. The average poll had him under 40% for a while, a single point national race. And so from that point to where he is, is finishing tonight, the turning point obviously being that first indictment in March of 2023, these are some gigantic gains that he's made.